first in the series of repairs we're going to start off with quite a simple repair and it's going to be based on the ZX Spectrum Plus and it's a common fault it's a fault where all of a sudden your keys aren't working properly or some of the keys aren't working properly and it seems to be in banks diagonal banks for most of the occasions where they don't work um, it's quite an easy fix doesn't involve too much you know technical know-how it's just you know it's one of those fixes that makes a big difference to a machine and it's quite easy to do so we're going to start off going over the fairly straightforward fixes and um, as we work our way through this series we'll get into you know something a bit more complex like removing processors repairing tracks resoldering parts but the biggest fault on most of the machines and that includes the rubber keyed versions of the Sinclair Spectrum and Sinclair's Plus based which is the black case whether it's a 48 or a 128 um, they do have problems with their keyboards and for the sake of 10 or 15 pounds it depends on where you buy your membrane from and that's all it is is replacing the membrane um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start having a look at the machine, taking it apart and replacing the membrane. So the first thing you see is a standard Spectrum Plus. This one's boxed up. You know, it's just how you would have arrived when it was brand new, although probably the box was in better condition than this. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the machine out, go through the problems and then we're just going to see if we can repair it. As you can see, it's nothing out of the ordinary once you get the outer casing off. It's in its normal polystyrene packaging. Now, removing the package, you just have your standard Sinclair Spectrum. Roughly in the way it would have been packaged, apart from a little bit tidier, when you bought it when it was brand new. Now all we're going to do is unpack the machine, remove it from the box and then we're going to remove the box because we no longer need this at the moment. Putting the machine back there you can see nothing massively out of the ordinary. All I've done now is taking the four screws out of the case ready and you can see how the easily the machine just comes apart. Now this is what you're left with is a bottom end of the case. We don't need this because this is not what is causing the problem. Now this is what's causing the issues which is the, the keyboard or the base or the top itself. Now as we turn it over, you can see there's, there's very, very little to it. And what tends to happen is around these hinges here, where they actually fasten down the, the membrane. Okay, two little screws hold it in. They actually start flexing around here and they crack. And that's what causes most of the issues on these machines. They crack and they don't make a, any connection or very poor connection. So keyboards on these, they are very, very flimsy in a way because they use a ribbon cable to connect it into the main board of the, the Spectrum itself. There's a big metal plate which gives the, the actual machine a bit of weight as well as supports the membrane for the keys to press onto. Okay, and that's what also gives it a little bit of its bounce. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this keyboard apart and show you how it works. 
first thing we're going to do is to take out 10 screws, 10 Phillips head screws to take the plate and the membrane off, which is what I'll do now. And just in the interest of video, I'll actually show you it once they've been removed, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unscrew a few of the screws. And then we'll just fast forward it on a little bit. Okay, we've just taken the screws out of it, and as you can see, you lift off with what is quite a substantial piece of steel. It's huge. It's quite weighty as well. So I'll just put this to one side. Okay, the next part you lift off. It's just, it's almost, it's just a cardboard backing, okay? It's to in isolate the two components, which is the steel in between the membrane itself. Okay, all you're left with now is a four screws holding it in place. Now having removed the last two pieces on here which hold the ribbon in place, you can now remove the membrane. And as you can see, it's literally just two pieces of material with an air gap, which actually when the air gap's depressed, it makes contact across the traces of the tracks and there's if you look very very carefully there you can just about see where it's cracking and especially on this one you can see in the light where it's actually split and that is causing your problem with the keys. It's a very simple design. And um, it's very cheap. <laughs> it's very cheap. But it works. You know, it's not dissimilar to a lot of the more modern machines because they all, most of them use some kind of membrane underneath if they didn't use proper key switches. And finally, you have your rubber mat, which acts as a bounce for the keys. And that basically is in place of key switches again, very cheap. But, you know, it has lasted and it's done its job. And if you lift this up gently, you can see how while uh, pressing the keys it works. And the biggest reason why the space bar isn't particularly brilliant on these because it only has the one plunger or the one pad rather than the one on each end, which would make it a lot easier and a lot more satisfying to press. And that's very similar to the return key up there. Or the enter key. Now that's the biggest fault with the keys on a Sinclair or a ZX Spectrum, especially the Plus. Um, the the rubber key models don't fare much better. Okay, but um, I think with the the harder parts, the harder plastic on here. It does cause a lot more kind of 
puncturing of the the membrane underneath it wears through it as well and it's people tend to be a lot more harsh on these because they're a little bit more unforgiving than the rubber that's on the original spectrum because it would take a lot pushing down on the rubber or the what they call the dead flesh keyboard to do damage to the membrane underneath so that is what usually causes your problem on your Sinclair Spectrum. So once you reassemble it, you have a nice working keyboard. On this model though, this model is going to be used for other things. You might, may or may not have noticed that there is a spare ULA floating around in the bottom of this. Uh, it's not in the best of health. But this machine is going to be used as a project machine all the way through. So just an introduction on keeping it nice and simple on how to repair your machine, especially with the um, most common fault, which is the keyboards. OK, so I hope you found this useful and we will use this machine to build it up on the next part of our project, which will be reassembling the keyboard itself, along with why I found the ULA was faulty on this machine and how I rectified it and how we tested it. Now since um, filming that a little bit about the keyboard, you can see Spectrum here. This um, is actually a different model because there's the original model which is all stripped down. Okay, so that's all stripped down. Um, waiting for its new membrane to be fitted but because the other one was also a project um, well I thought I was going to wait and then to fit them all you know in one go to get a working machine but my working Spectrum Plus has developed the same fault with the keys um, not quite the same pattern of keys but obviously it has the same fault so I'm going to reassemble this and do it in the stages of the way the other one was taken apart. So you're going to get a little bit of an earlier view of how to reassemble the keyboard. And on inspection, when I've taken the machine apart, it does look like somebody in the past has tried to do a little bit of a repair to hold the tracks together with tape. Okay, not the best repair in the world, but you know, we've caught it. So we're going to try and get this all back into a nice working machine. So the first thing you need is a new membrane, shiny, brand new, made in Scotland. So it's an original membrane. And then this is the old one. Okay. So first thing you have to do is make sure that when you're going to reassemble it you actually line it up in the correct way. You have these holes which are offset on the space bar which should match the offset hole on the original. Okay, so if you put it in the wrong upside uh, back to front or the wrong way around you will end up puncturing the membrane and it would be just scrap again so you'd have to throw it away. I'm just going to move the main machine out of the way and we're going to reassemble it okay so first thing is first is you need to put the keyboard rubber mat back into place and make sure it's just take your time make sure it's not bulging Because it's going to raise when you put it on the desk. Your next part is to take the membrane and then to line it up with all of the screw holes. Just be very careful that you get it lined up 100%. So just take your time on this. 
and make sure it is lined up as best and as perfect you can. Next, we have the card. Again, it has to line up 100%. There's a tiny little indent marker there. Okay, and a tiny little indent marker there. Now the first thing you do, once you've got it lined up, two pins, here and here, is to drop in the centre screw. And then once you've done the centre screw, don't do it up tight. You can work your way around the board, putting in the other screws. Okay, so once you've done that, and you've put in all the screws loosely, you can start tightening them up one at a time. And just go around the board in a circular fashion so you don't nip them down and cause damage to the, either the membrane or any other part of the board including that little cardboard isolator as well okay so and just nip them up nice and tight and then work your way around making sure they're all fairly even so the keys don't stick and then they bounce quite nicely together. Once they're all tight, we're going to screw in these bridge pieces just here, just to keep them all nice and tight so they don't get rattled around or damaged. Okay, there's two of them, one either side. Okay, so once you've secured down the, um, the membrane, um, all you need to do now is reassemble the machine which is just literally slotting these two into the board and putting in about six screws into the case. But before you do that, just check the keys are pretty much lined up and they all bounce. Okay, that's when you know you've got it pretty much lined up inside once all the keys look fairly pretty much in line and they're going to bounce okay and then once you're finished you have a slightly dusty but working Sinclair Spectrum Plus doesn't take long you just got to take your time and make sure everything's lined up and that it works properly okay and there you have a working ZX Spectrum which was once consigned to the garbage can basically because at the end of the day how many of these machines have faulty keyboards? One completely working 100% Sinclair Spectrum Okay, I hope you find this useful and uh, the next one will be on some more major repairs on that other model which was um, does need a lot of work but it's not beyond repair and not beyond saving which is what we're going to have to do with a lot of these machines as they age. So I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for listening. <laughs>